Good morning and happy Tuesday. It's time to talk travel, my favorite subject. Uh, today's subject is really unusual, brag worthy places for you to stay while you travel. Um, this kind of spurred out of, I got a press release last week from bookit.com and bookit has come up with a list of, I've got a map now on their site of different places in each state that are really unusual where you can stay that, um, you know, are things like covered wagons. Can you even imagine? I, I, it boggles my mind, but at any rate, so it's called book the U S or the book it list as part of booking.com. But I, I saw that press release that came across and it got me thinking, okay, there have gotta be other sites that um, feature really cool places to stay. I know on Airbnb, they have written about here in Atlanta, there's a tree house in the middle of the city, Buckhead, um, where you can book, actually, I think there are three of them, tree houses. But at any rate, that, um, it, it helped me find another place. Morning, Kendra, there's another place uh, called oddends.com. And so I reached out to some of my travel buddies to say, okay, who's stayed in really cool places? I know I did sort of out of a uh, mistake. I booked a trip with my daughter two years ago. It was called Lobsters and Lighthouses, where we went up and down the East Coast. Um, on that particular year, we went from North Carolina up to Maine. And we stopped in at Martha's Vineyard. Um, that was one of the stops on the way. And I couldn't find a hotel or a place to rent. So I went on Airbnb to find a place for us to sleep that night and ended up with a sailboat. And it was one of the coolest experiences, although there's a warning to kind of come with that, which I'll get to um, in, in a bit. But, but we stayed on a sailboat overnight, and I loved it, loved it, loved it. In fact, it's made me want to take sailing lessons and actually invest in my own sailboat now because I thought it was such a neat experience. But it, it, this topic really got me thinking about all of the unusual places you can stay and visit when you're traveling. And I put it out on a closed Facebook group I'm part of with a bunch of other travel lovers, travel writers, um, people who just, it's normal for them to hit the road for you know 200 days out of the year. Um, don't we all dream of that? At any rate, and I could not believe some of the places they stayed. Some of these I've heard of before, but... One gal sent me video, she stayed in a windmill. A windmill, inside a windmill, can you imagine? Like, I have always wanted to stay in a lighthouse, and I still will, I will make that happen. But um, a windmill, working windmill, um, or a bubble. In fact, I took some pictures, they actually sent them to me, and I included them in my TV segment, but look at this, this bubble. Whoop. Can you imagine? That's perfect, right? You're protected from the elements, but you're still out there enjoying it. And the picture above it, that's a cave. They slept in caves. Now, how neat is that? How neat is that? I'm trying to remember, I think the cave was Cappadocia. But, you know, if you want to know where any of these places are, comment, and I will add links uh, where I can and, and connect you to where they're found around the world. But I want people to think out of the box because it used to be, you know, it was, it was a big deal to brag about staying at a really nice plush resort. Um, not so much now, now it's all about, I, I talked with a travel, um, a travel writer who really, we, we boiled it down to, it's about bragging rights. It's about being able to post, I will share, I promise. Um, it's about being able to post on social media, look, I stayed in an underwater resort. This actually exists down in the Keys in Florida. You have to scuba dive your way into this underwater lodge. I think it's the Jules Verne Lodge. Um, and I want to say it's in Key Largo. But you actually stay here. I have a picture of that one as well. Let me see if I can dig that up. Can you even imagine how fun that would be to scuba dive your way in and get a load of this? I read they actually have food delivery service. There's pizza delivery under the sea. Is that not so cool? And, and it's not like you have to sleep in a scuba tank. You're actually sleeping in like a little submarine. Here's a shot. How cool is that? You're sleeping there. I mean, it's not fancy by any stretch. But imagine the fish just swimming by while you're underwater overnight. I think you do it like a two-night stay, but the bottom line is that's so cool. And it really isn't far. I think it, I honestly think this lodge is really only 20 feet below the sea. It's not, it's not like you're going to the, the very deep depths. Here's another cool one. You've heard of tree houses, okay? Tree houses are pretty cool to sleep in. That is a bird's nest. Can you see it up in there? The little here. Over there, bird's nest, whoop, there. Can you see that? 
Like there are tree houses. There are glass houses up in the trees. That's a bird's nest. That's a bird's nest. Who thinks this stuff up? Here's another one. Would you guys want to stay in an old jail? I think that's kind of cool. I don't think I'd want to sleep at like Alcatraz, but look at that. It's converted. People have bought out the old buildings and made them very, very cool again. I would totally sleep in a jail cell like that, right? That's like the lobby, the foyer, you know? I guess it depends on what's happened there. Here's another cool one. My buddy Sue Rodman told me about this one. You know how you sometimes you're in the doghouse? <laughs> you're literally sleeping in a doghouse, guys. That's a house shaped like a dog. You can rent this out. It's like in the middle of America. It's crazy. This one, if I'm going to stay in a tree house, make it like this. This is a tree house in Sri Lanka. Isn't that something else? Like, I could totally do that. That is a different kind of camping than the Girl Scout stuff we did. Here's another one close to me in Georgia. Yeah, Barb, that doghouse is cool, right? Um, there you go. Look at that. A covered wagon. A covered wagon. And they've had these in a couple of spots. But this, they have covered wagons very close to where I live in Atlanta. And I haven't done it yet. I'm not sure my daughter would think that's very cool. I think I could do it if the weather's right. I don't want to do it when it's really cold out. I did the sleeping on the street as a fundraiser two weeks ago. And let me tell you, I never want to sleep where it's cold. Although, here, here we go, talking cold. Look at this. This is Finland. Or, okay, yes, um, my buddy Katja sent me this. These are, I'm sure you've seen them all over social media, but they're the, like, glass, um, like a, they're see-through igloos. That's how, that's the only way to describe it, a see-through igloo. So you can lie there at night, see the northern lights through it, she said the igloos were really great. I don't think she loved the resort, and it's really, really expensive. Um, so, so that's interesting. Let's see what other people said, because there were, I'm trying to remember some of the other really neat places. Maybe some of you that are watching, because you're travel lovers, have stayed in a really, really awesome spot. Um, I think the social, I think the sleeping underwater, that one for me. But I'm a water baby, so that's, yeah, that's got to be it. But, you know, lying down a lighthouse. Totally doing that one day, totally. And and again, you can find these. I'll put some links for the ones that I found while I was researching. I was doing this for a TV segment and um, and was just blown away by what my friends around the world have sent and where they've stayed. They, um, you can find them on booking.com, as I mentioned, on the, on the book the US list or the book it list is what they called the program. Or that one site I found called oddends.com. I mean, they were offering, you could do sleep in a caboose, railroad cars. You name it, it's out there. It's amazing. Um, or Airbnb. That's where I found the sailboat that I slept on. And that's the takeaway lesson I want to tell you. This is it. Martha's Vineyard. I personally loved waking up on this sailboat and being able to look out at Martha's Vineyard in a way very different than everybody else stays there. The glass bubble house is total bucket list. But Barb, I'm telling you, she said it wasn't as cool as she thought. So not worth the money is really what she said. And I think it's because the entire resort for her, in her opinion, felt very, um, almost tacky tourist. Um, they'd overdone it, you know, selling t-shirts in, in the lobby. And she said the food wasn't amazing either. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and that is one of the things I wanted to talk about. If you're going to book a really unusual, bragworthy place to stay, it really is all about location. Do not count on amenities. Do not think you're going to get the best linen sheets or, you know, super um, plush towels or what have you. It really, you might not even have Wi-Fi. I mean, think about it, underwater. However, you're going to have really cool photos and videos to share later with your friends and a great story to tell. But also be safe because here's my lesson on the sailboat one. The Airbnb sailboat that I stayed on in Martha's Vineyard, I did not realize when I booked it that there were going to be other people on the sailboat that night. And I was traveling alone with my then 10-year-old. Um, and we were anchored out in the water. Um, we were not tied up to a dock. So there were three bedrooms, I want to say, on the sailboat. Well, three rooms, two bunks, which my daughter and I had taken. And then there was a, a like a queen bed in, in one room, which a couple had. But we weren't told that when we booked it. I guess they booked it after. And it scared me a little bit to think about the fact that I was going to be sleeping out on the water with another couple I didn't know. Like, what if, what if they were weirdos? What if they were not safe? What if, so that's something to keep in mind if you're going to book something like this, if you're you know, going to be bedding down in an unsecure place, because again, you're on a boat, anything can happen. Um, and that got my, it, it, you know, of course, 
Airbnb, you know, they're going to check out the people who are renting the places, but not necessarily, you are renting it out, but not necessarily the other people that are staying there. So that made me a little uncomfortable. So keep that in mind if you're, if you're a little leery. For me, I would have done that in a heartbeat with me and another adult, but my child and I, it made me a little leery. Um, and, and nothing ended up happening. It was totally fine. But if something had, we would have had to swim ashore, <laughs> swim for our lives. Um, and again, it was a great story. I asked my daughter, would she ever want to do that again? She said, no. She didn't love the bunk bed feel of sleeping on a boat. I personally, um, I'm good. I, it's all about location. It's about waking up with a fabulous view. And and again, now after doing the story and researching, I absolutely want to sleep in the bird's nest. I'll show you that photo again. Absolutely want to sleep in a bird's nest. That is too cool to me. Hopefully it wouldn't rain that night. I do think, Bar, I, my buddy Bard said this one, I do think sleeping in the see-through igloo would be phenomenal, especially with the northern lights. Um, I don't know about the, Barb liked the doghouse. I, I, don't, I don't think I care so much about the doghouse, but the jail cells, absolutely, absolutely. Underwater, for sure, for sure want to sleep underwater. That's down in the Keys. Um, and again, look, that's not fancy. You know, it's pretty basic. The bird's nest, that's what I was saying. I would totally do that. Um, and a cave. I love the idea of the cave. Just again, when else are you going to sleep in a cave? And the bubble. You can set that out up on your back, back deck, you know? I mean, super cool, super, you know, and you don't have to pay a ton of money. I know for the Airbnb, I think I probably, I, it was maybe 250 bucks to, tops um, for the sailboat we slept on. But Martha's Vineyard, that's affordable. So, um, again, if you've stayed at a really cool place, put it in the comments, share it with people. Um, I will add links to the sites I talked about, oddends.com, Airbnb, um, I mean, you can, you can figure that one out, and the bucket list. Um, and I'm sure that some of these other sites have it, and I'm sure if you Google really cool places to stay, old jail cells, converted jail cells, converted caboose, all of these things are, are easy enough to find. It's just a matter of saying, hey, I want to I want to be an adventurer this time on my trip. And I'm okay not sleeping in a four-star, five-star hotel. I'm I'm gonna go out for the experience. So um, drop it down in there. I think next week's time to talk travel is gonna be on automobiles because I've got the auto show here in Atlanta this week. Um, and I always love seeing what's cool in, in all the new things. So we'll talk travel on the road next week. Um, if you've got any comments, drop them below. If you haven't already given me a like or a thumbs up on the Desiree Miller Travel Writer, Blogger, TV News Producer site, please do because that helps me reach you next week. You guys have a great week.